Hello everyone, I'm Felipe. I'm Lillian. And we're the Postmodern family. We are Americans living in the UK reacting to Great Britain. We make five new videos a week, so hit that subscribe button now. Today we're going to react to a Yes Prime Minister clip about the Church of England. a modernist in the Church of England? Ah, well the word modernist is code for non-believer. <laughs> <laughs> you mean an atheist? No, no, Prime Minister. An atheist clergyman couldn't continue to draw his stipend. So, when they stop believing in God, they call themselves modernists. <laughs> How could the Church of England suggest an atheist as Bishop of Bury St Edmunds? Well, very easily. The Church of England is primarily a social organisation, not a religious one. Is it? Well, <laughs> it's part of the rich social fabric of this country. So bishops need to be the sort of chaps who speak properly, know which knife and fork to use. Oh, man. The sort of people one can look up to. So that's what Peter meant when he said that Canon Stanford's wife was eminently suitable. Of course. Cheers. Is there really no other possible candidate? Well, not really. There are a couple of better jobs available recently, you see. Much better than a bishop. A rook. Oh. <laughs> Very droll. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, the Dean of Windsor is a better job, or Westminster. Such preferment enables one to be on intimate terms with the royals. So being a bishop is just a matter of status. The question of dressing up in cassocks and gaiters. Yes, <laughs> though gaiters are now only worn at significant religious events like the Royal Garden Party. <laughs> <laughs> well, the church is trying to be more relevant. To God? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, relevant in sociological terms. <laughs> so the ideal candidate from the Church of England's point of view would be a cross between a, a socialite and a socialist. Precisely. <laughs> uh, just interrupt. Uh, mm. May I give you the career details of Canon Stanford? Yes, please do. Well, after Theological College, he became chaplain to the Bishop of Sheffield. He moved on to be the diocesan advisor on ethnic communities and social responsibility. <laughs> he also organised conferences on interfaith interface and interface <laughs> between Christians and Marxists and between Christians and the women of Greenham Common. <laughs> Then he went on to be the university chaplain of the University of Essex, then vice principal of a theological college, and is now, as you know, secretary to the disarmament committee of the British Council of Churches. Has he ever been an ordinary vicar of a parish? <laughs> Good heavens, no, Prime Minister. Clergymen <laughs> who want to be bishops try to avoid pastoral work. <laughs> so what you're saying is that Canon Stanford is a political troublemaker. Well, not exactly, but it could be a thorn in your side on several issues. Strikes... Public expenditure on welfare, inner cities, unemployment, defence. It's interesting, isn't it, that nowadays politicians want to talk about moral issues and bishops want to talk politics. <laughs> and he'd speak with the authority of a bishop and as a member of the Lords. He designed a new church in South London and on the plans were places for dispensing orange juice, family planning and organising demos. <laughs> but no place for Holy Communion. <laughs> Uh, well, there was a dual-purpose hall in which you could hold a service. And the church approved this? Well, of course. You see, the church is run by theologians. How do you mean? Well, theology is a device for enabling agnostics to stay within the church. <laughs> I don't want Canon Stanford. What am I to do? Well, you could turn both candidates down, but that would be exceptional and not advised. Even though one of them wants to get God out of the Church of England and the other wants to get the Queen out? <laughs> Well, the Queen is inseparable from the Church of England. Okay. What about God? <laughs> I think he's what's called an optional extra. Wow. Too accurate. There's nothing less to, nothing really Too to say. Too accurate. That's very... How do they know? How do they know? When was that made, man? I don't think we can add... I can add anything to that. That's just... Just so true. That's just not even... It's just... It's, uh, it's true and, yeah, unfortunate, yeah. So do you think... So I've been listening to a lot uh, of this podcast called Irreverend Pod uh -huh. with J.A. Franklin, who is a Church mm. of England uh, curate. And he himself has said that that the Church of England is completely heretical. Mm. And I wonder why he's still in it, but I don't know. I don't For know. the... Uh... For the privileges and the <laughs> titles and... But he seems really genuine and, and he's uh, clearly a believer and he's not an atheist okay. or an agnostic or a modernist so uh -huh. yeah. um i don't know i don't know what he's doing in there but anyway mm. he himself can recognize that and he sees it from the inside it mm. just seems like 
Mm. It's all a political game, mm. right? It's all virtue signaling. It's all the Church of England has become. That's why it's, when it said it, it, it tries to stay relevant. It's that's, mm-hmm. that's all. It's tried to justify its existence because mm. it feels guilty about believing the things it used to believe in and guilty over owning a lot of land, maybe guilty over previous sins. It's just, it's just reparations. R- ripe. Not ripe, but. Uh, rife? Rife, yeah, yeah. Rife with guilt. Mm. And so it's um, always trying to show that it's on point, on trend, mm, mm. on the right side of history. Um, so. Who cares? But it, the it, point it... was so spot on. Is it, is it trying to be relevant to God? <laughs> <laughs> Stay relevant to God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The so the fact that this guy just, man the script writing is perfect. Yeah, I'm so impressed by this episode <laughs> or this snippet. The um and I find it interesting that the this prime minister is mm. not include in. He just seems mm. oh isn't it isn't the purpose of the Church of England to serve yeah. God? And, yeah, yeah. You know, bring moral issues and stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha, what what makes a good candidate? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> ha, why, he has never been a. Like a uh, parish priest, of, yeah, and yeah. They're like no, they avoid that. Yeah, B- bishops try to avoid parish ministry. Okay, wow, well. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, and I think that's true mm. for um, like Secretary of um, like in America, head of education departments and things like that. They're never they're, educated. They like never have taught mm. or people who determine curricula. They mm. they've not been teachers. They're usually like political activists who are de- are developing curriculum. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. And I think they've said what they're now only hiring diversity candidates yes. for parish for for yeah. for ministry for ministry. They're no longer accepting white male. White male Is candidates. that for the for the or- for ordination? For ordination. Wow. Yeah, but they won't take the Nigerians. Hmm. Oh, it's just crazy. They need to. God needs to punish the Church of England. Yeah. I don't know, just needs to take all its property, bankrupt all its stocks, and make it live off of its own back, and not off of the riches of previous generations mm. and and property that is inherited. And then think... we would see if it would survive. I mean, do you because think the that... e, the analog church in america the episcopal church Mm -hmm. has suffered massively Mm. Um, they just lost a case where the whole diocese of texas uh walked out a few years back Mm -hmm. from the episcopal church and took i think something like 300 million or something of property value and uh the episcopal church sued the diocese of texas and Mm. said you can leave but you're not leaving with our property Mm. and uh went all the way they appealed because Texas won and won and they kept wow. appealing it. And finally, it um, was submitted into the uh, list of cases uh, for the Supreme Court to hear. And they said no. So they turned it down. Hmm. So that's it. It's final. Texas won. Wow. So, um, so yeah, they've suffered massively from tithe de- 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 uh, decline, mm-hmm. uh, property that's been walked out because it's gotten so heretical Mm -hmm. um the church of england needs to face the same fate i think i mean aren't they already facing the same fate in terms of they've been closing churches yeah for ages but there's they have such financial ties financial ties to rental properties Mm. and uh they have lots of money so they're gonna stick around doing their fake services and going through the motions yeah to then have what a bishop archbishop to influence look my call is the next archbishop is going to be a woman um and uh gay marriage will be a sacrament within five years and then what what do you mean and then what they're going to keep carrying on financially Hmm. i think so long as there's parliament so long as there's england there'll be the church of england Hmm. I see. Yeah. It's a big shame. Yes, yeah, it's a big... Who's responsible for the state of the church? Well, you might say the queen, who's the governor, but they say then, but she 
really has no power anymore to do anything. So then who does it really reside in? It resides in parliament. And who runs parliament or who gives authority to parliament? It's the people. Mm. So it's just the people's will, I think, indirectly. Mm. Um, and no one really, I mean, the Church of England is so irrelevant to the common man. It's not a, a point of contention on a voting, on a ballot for who you pick as an MP. So left to it, to the to the sort of outskirts of the of political interest nationally, it just left to its own devices, basically, and all it's going to do is try to justify, keep trying to justify its own existence. So me too, me too, me too. We in the we embolden women. We've left. We let them become mm. bishops. We embolden so and so too. We're on, you know, on point with critical race theory. Are, and so we're. But like, does the people's opinion matter? Do you do or does it? The people have no really... opinion on it because they don't. They don't really care. Mm. I think if you had a referendum on the Church of England, they would be disestablished. Hmm. I'd guarantee if they put a referendum, should the Church of England be funded by state revenue and state lands, mm -hmm. or should it be its own independent private thing, it would be disestablished. Hmm. And I then, see that. And then we would see hmm. what it would do. Thanks so much for watching this episode. We hope you enjoyed it. And I hope I didn't drone on too much about the uh, Church of England. I do apologize. Not. Sorry, not sorry. No Vicar of Dibley. Stop leaving Vicar of Dibley <laughs> comments, please. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.